Okay, so basically, you might have heard of the term quantitative easing a lot in the news recently, as the central banks are using this method to fight the economic downturn caused by the coronavirus. But what does quantitative easing actually mean, and more importantly, how does it affect you? Quantitative easing is basically part of a larger scheme that central banks do called open market operations. And a central bank essentially is just a financial institution that is part of the state or the nation and has the authority to issue the national currency. So they are usually uh, created to control the supply of money in a country. Money, please! Money, please. Money, please. Ben, give her some money. It's easier. And to do that, they use open market operations, or also known as monetary policy, more colloquially. An example of open market operations is when they lower or increase the interest rate. Now, raising the interest rate would decrease spending since it would cost more to pay back on loans. So central banks would usually raise it to cure problems like inflation. Likewise, lowering the interest rate would encourage people to spend money and increase economic activity. So lowering of the interest rate would actually be used to tackle things like recessions, downturns, like the economy right now. And this brings us to quantitative easing, which is another way for central banks to increase the money supply and increase economic activity to fight the significant unemployment, stock market drops, and the loss of profits due to the coronavirus outbreak. They do this by buying securities from private banks. So securities are essentially an asset the banks have. So bonds, mortgages, and stocks, for example. In exchange, there's more money for the banks to increase their liquidity and reserves so they can lend that money out to borrowers and make investments and whatnot. Quantitative easing also directly changes the interest rate because it's directly affecting the money supply in the economy. And in this case, since it's increasing the amount of cash for people to spend, it will lead to a decrease in the overall interest rate. While more money sounds like a great thing given the current state of things, the main problem with, with quantitative easing is that it encourages bad economic behavior. Since quantitative easing helps lower the interest rate, people will be encouraged to make malinvestments in order to take advantage of the current state of things. Classic example is this is during the housing bubble of the early 2000s. So what happened was the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank of the United States, they set a historically low interest rates in the early 2000s, and there were other incentives such as tax deductions for mortgage interests and government assistive organizations like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they were also buying mortgage securities unconditionally, basically. So that really motivated people to buy houses. Now, when the interest rates increased, many people actually couldn't afford to pay back on their loans. And that led to a lot of defaults and mass selling of assets, which contributed to the Great Recession in 2008. Another detrimental effect of quantitative easing is inflation. Now, some of the stimulus packages pumped out for this pandemic are in the trillions. So adding this amount of money to the current money supply will lead to the devaluing of the currency. Since we no longer have a currency, which is money intrinsically backed up by something of value like gold, silver, or 2009 Lego Star Wars Clone Wars ATT Walker set, the central bank can basically go dumb and print as much money as they want. Plus, most of the money that comes from QE actually only circulates in financial institutions like banks and stock markets. So it's not really beneficial to the general public and more so for the guys on Wall Street. Therefore, there are camps that are more supportive of fiscal policies instead. That's another story for another time. So basically, that's how quantitative easing works in layman's terms and how it might affect you and the overall economy. Now, if you have any other topics you want to learn about, feel free to leave it in the comments. Thank you for watching and please like, share and subscribe. What the f does that mean?